In this video, I'm gonna do a revision and recap session going through everything you need to know for unit one, section A, the challenge of natural hazards. Welcome back to this episode of Sunday Morning Coffee. Slightly different video today and it's going to be a revision and recap session. So I'm going to go through everything you need to know for that first unit, the challenge of natural hazards. So I'm going to give you a, a quick overview of the whole unit. I'm also going to go through some suggestions on how you can revise for this topic. I'm going to finish with presenting with you with a few different exam questions you could just go and do yourself independently. Okay, so let's jump into an overview of everything you need to know for challenge of natural hazards. Uh, again, it might be worth you doing this with a revision guide, with your notes, or again, click the links above or in the description and go back through some of my other videos to find the right answers if you want some more detail um, for each topic. Okay, so the first part of uh, the challenge of natural hazards you need to rem remember and understand what actually a natural hazard is. So you just need to go through that again, the definitions of what a natural hazard is. Uh, we've got tectonic and atmospheric hazards. Again, it's important to make that distinction. So tectonic hazards, we're looking at stuff like earthquakes and volcanoes, stuff that happens uh, on tectonic plate boundaries. And then we've got atmospheric hazards. So we've looked at global atmospheric circulation and um, tropical storms, so hurricanes, cyclones, and typhoons. Okay, so you just need to know the differences between them. Briefly have a good understanding of why people choose to actually live near these hazards. So people consciously decide to live near, near these areas, even though they're quite dangerous and hazardous. You need some reasons. It could be stuff like farming, that it's a beautiful place to live, that it's cheap land, uh, and they are unable to move as well. It's another reason why people choose to live in those areas. Then we move on to tectonic hazards, and you need to know a couple of case studies and examples of an earthquake or a volcano. So you need a brief understanding of how earthquakes and volcanoes actually work. Um, and then you're gonna to have to understand the effects and responses. So um, you know, what are the primary and secondary effects? Um, and also, how do we actually respond to it in the immediate, short term, as well as the longer term? Now you need to know a couple of case studies um, for this part of the course. I looked at Italy from 2009 and Nepal from 2015. Okay, so you need to go back and you really need to know these case studies well. What they're looking for when they're giving you exam questions is that can you kind of state numbers, figures, death rates, how many people were injured or homeless, as well as specific responses. So what did they actually do to respond to these disasters? Okay, so in the immediate short term, did they send aid and shelter? And then long term, did they actually try and um, help the area recover, uh, again, rebuild, and get everyone back on their feet. Global atmospheric circulation is probably one of the hardest things on the course. So again, it's definitely worth going back and checking out my video on it. It's a very complicated topic, but don't forget the context of why you need to know it. The whole reason we look at global atmospheric circulation is because it helps to try and explain why we get different climate zones around the world. If you um, compare global atmospheric circulation model to uh, the different climate zones, the different ecosystems around the world, there is a strong link between those different climates and those different ecosystems. So that is the context for it. Understanding the process, again, is kind of difficult, but never forget why you need to know it. Atmospheric ha hazards, so we look at tropical storms, and specifically hurricanes, cyclones, and typhoons. Again, they are just named on uh, where they actually occur. They're all the same type of tropical storm. Um, we looked at Typhoon Haiyan as a case study example, so again, you need to know that case study really well. Again, the primary and secondary effects, and then the immediate and long-term responses for that event. UK extreme weather is another topic you need to have a good understanding. So what we define as extreme weather in the UK, okay, we don't get hurricanes or tornadoes or earthquakes very often or very strong ones in this country. So we're talking about extreme heat waves, droughts, 
um, and snow and cold weather and, and storms. Okay, so you need to have that understanding and, and how we are affect, affected by it in this country, this extreme weather. Uh, we looked at the Somerset floods from 2014, that's our example of extreme weather in the UK. And again, you need to know the specifics about that case study. So again, who was affected, how many people were affected, as well as how did uh, you know, the area respond to it. Lastly, we looked at climate change. So again, taking all that evidence into account, knowing where they get this evidence from, um, how climate change affects us, and then looking you know, at the causes and how we can mitigate and adapt to it. So again, those two definitions, knowing what mitigation is, knowing what adaption is, is something that you need to fully understand. So how can you revise for this topic? Well, you're watching this video, which is a good start. Again, you're thinking about what topics you need to actually uh, break down and understand. Again, go back and watch any of the other videos in this series to help you uh, understand this in a bit more detail. Uh, you could go through your revision guides and question books. So I've highlighted those before, I'll put some links in the description. Um, if you're thinking about getting a revision guide, again, speak to your teachers. They all have one uh, that they will recommend for what you've been doing at your school, so make sure you check with them. Uh, you could make flashcards or a flip book. Okay, so these flip books are really good. You can write uh, on each different kind of card, flip it over. It could be good that you do one uh, flip book per topic. Um, or you could just try and get the entire like natural hazards section into one flip book as well. Okay, you could just write definitions on each card. Uh, it's kind of up to you how you use that. Okay, but again, that's another uh, interesting way of revising. Uh, you could make your own flashcards as well. I know a lot of people do that. You can buy some uh, CGP. Again, I'll put the link in the description. Uh, do make their own question flashcards. So they have the questions on the front and then the answers on the back. You could just make flashcards, which again, you put each topic on each card. You could put an earthquake case study on one card and everything is just there on that one card. Uh, you could make a mind map. So again, here is an example that I highlighted for some of my pupils when they were revising and you can break the mind map into different sections and then go off to different strands. Okay, so you could screen this, screenshot this example, paste it into Publisher and add other things to it or just print it out. Okay, or you can just make your own ones on paper anyway. You could also make a global atmospheric circulation balloon model. This is what I usually do with pupils in my classes. So it might be something that you do at home. And again, you just label all the different bits, all the different cells for that model. You could also look at some BBC bite size information. So the website is fantastic, but they also have little tests and quizzes that you could quite easily do. Um, and the last thing is practice questions. So here are eight of my pra own practice questions uh, that you can take the time to go through. Uh, it varies different marks. There's two markers, four markers, and there's a nine marker to finish. And again, you should have experienced some of these with your teachers. Um, so you should have a good idea of what is expected when answering those. Again, if you need to find out any of the answers, again, go back and check some of my videos um, for that information. So that is just a quick summary of everything you need to know for the first section of paper one, the challenge of natural hazards. Again, if you found this video useful, give it a like and please share it. Uh, if you subscribe to the channel, you can get all these new videos into your subscription feed on a weekly basis. And next week, I'm gonna start looking at the next section of paper one, which is looking at ecosystems.